On this exciting mini episode, it's Sally Fenner versus Marilyn Cluck. Who you got? It's a special audio edition of my Perry Mason Season 1 Defendants Tournament. Now, on the Perry Pod. Welcome, everyone. I'm your humble host, Jonathan Searcy. Before we move on to Season 4 of Perry Mason, I thought I'd finish out our Season 1 Defendants Tournament. The setup, I put all 40 of Season 1's Defendants into a bracket. They're facing off against each other for the crown of Season 1 Champion. My criteria? Pretty simple. Number 1. Was the Defendant memorable? Number 2. Was the defendant the most memorable guest star in the episode slightly different? Number three, did Perry respect the defendant? And number four, do we have any other history with the actor who portrayed the defendant? You'll see how it works soon enough. I'm not ranking the episodes per se. My fave season one episode, The Case of the Screaming Woman, only as a so-so defendant, Leona Walsh. The Case of the Fiery Fingers, not my favorite episode, but Nora Mae Quincy made it into the second round. This episode's matchup features a secretary and friend of drunkards everywhere who can do a pretty mean freestyle swim when a dog's nipping at her heels versus a woman who's gonna use her own good looks to con the man who conned her sister. It's Sally Fenner, from the case of the negligent nymph, and Marilyn Clark from the case of the lonely heiress. Let's see who comes out on top. (laughs) Category one, was the defendant memorable? Sally gives the episode its title with her mermaid routine after she breaks into George Alder's office. That dog will tear it to pieces. Marilyn is the lonely heiress whose advertisement gets all the letters sent Edmund Lacey's way. So if I said your money didn't mean a thing to me, I'd be lying. Hoping to meet you soon, Charles B. Barnaby. Memorable, you bet. Advantage, push. Kind of a tie. Category 2. Was the defendant the most compelling non-permanent character in the case? I'm going to give Sally the nod. She's got stiff competition. Nina Santos, the restaurant proprietor. The unshaven beachcomber. Karen the murderess. But Sally has an amazing opening sequence. The police may have other ideas. Would you like me to get them for you? Operator, get me the police. Just contemplate how many times you've seen someone in a Perry Mason episode threaten to call the police and then back down or have the gumption to threaten someone be challenged by the police and then renege. The stare your boss in the eyes and dial the police phone scene by Sally is amazing. As for Marilyn, she's certainly memorable, but she gets drowned out, lost in the noise of a host of fascinating characters. There's Charles Barnaby Bailey, a memorable murder victim if there ever was one. Clumsy, but uh, I do about as well as a newborn calf without his mama to hold him up. (laughs) There's Dolores, our murderer. (laughs) It's my vida. (laughs) My life. And then Edmund Lacey, a total schnooknick who's neither the murderer nor the murdered, yet remains indelibly stamped in our memory. It seems like a lot of money. It is. 
I haven't even gotten to the Howie Long lookalike contest winner that is Marilyn Clark's stepbrother. Advantage, Sally Fenner. Category three, does Perry respect the defendant? Sally does not come up in the denouement of the case of the negligent nymph, but neither does Marilyn for that matter. Perry, Paul, and Della are more occupied with the case's respective murderers, Karen and Dolores. That means we have to go to the early part of the episode. Perry risks getting Sally out of the water and secreting her in the library under Trag's nose before stashing her away with Della when the police find her. Della, this waiting is driving me crazy. How much longer do we have to stay here? Well, there's not too much we can do. We'll just have to wait till Perry gets here. About time. Here. Miss Sally Fenner? Yes? I'm Lieutenant Drag from Homicide. Perry actually puts Della in harm's way to do right by Sally. Perry and Marilyn have one big discussion, and Perry's not liking what he's hearing from his future client. You agreed I wouldn't have to. But you don't understand, Mr. Mason. You deliberately brought him here knowing that he turned me over to the police. That's enough, Miss Cartwright. You know, you're in a very precarious position. Advantage? Sally Fenner. Category four. Finally, do we have a prior history with the actor or actress who portrayed the defendant? Alas, Peggy Castle, a.k.a. Sally Fenner, never appeared in another Perry episode. While Kathleen Crowley, we'll see her again in season seven and season nine, including the famous Case of the Drowsy Mosquito episode. Advantage, Marilyn Clark. Final verdict, Sally Fenner wins this one by half a pool length. The fact that she does a couple of things we almost never see Perry clients do, hiding with Della, calling her crooked boss's bluff, that's enough to move her on to the next round. Sorry, Marilyn, you'll have to make do with your millions. Congratulations, Sally. Your prize is a new gig where your boss isn't a crook. You'll have friends who aren't potential murderers, or actual murderers as the case may be, and you're still close enough to the water if you want to take a lunch break swim. As for the rest of you, may you keep on walking that Park Avenue beat! <laughs>